Hey there, all you cool, epic, and awesome fans, followers, and listeners. Welcome to episode 49 of the Cool Epic Awesome Podcast. My name is Matt, and I'll be your co-host today. And I'm your other co-host, Joe. And on episode 49 today, we're going to have a relatively shorter one compared to our others. I think yeah. we only have two films today to discuss. Uh, we saw Furiosa in theaters, which, Joe, I know you loved. You're, you're like yeah. newly introduced to... Fury Road mm. as well, right? Yeah, so, like the Mad Max world. Yeah. And then um, the other film we actually chose based on our giveaway. So for those of you who don't know, we hosted a giveaway. And Mr. Draco Maze was the winner. And we chose his movie that he considered a hidden gem. Uh, Honestly, it was, all right, we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll get to it later. But the yeah. film's called Better Watch Out. It's like a, a Christmas sort of Home Alone. Yeah. Home invasion meets, type of... Yeah, yeah, it's like... I don't know. It, maybe it should have stayed hidden. That's all I'm going to say. No, I'm, I'm kidding. But... <laughs> um, yeah, we could, we'll we get to that movie later, but we'll start off with Furiosa. Uh, so Furiosa is the film directed by George Miller, famous director. Um, it stars Anya Taylor-Joy, and it's a prequel to Mad Max Fury Road, which, which released... Isn't, a, which isn't that a prequel to the original... Mad Max. I'm not entirely sure. I don't really know. I haven't seen like those original films. Yeah. To be, to be fair, um, those are also directed by George Miller. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. But yeah, I'm not. I don't know if it's a prequel to those, but I. So I. I'm. I'm coming at Furiosa only with the knowledge of what I saw in, in Fury Road. I yeah. don't know. You know. I actually. I. I watched Fury Road before. I got it before I watched this. Like I got to see it. I never watched it originally. Yeah, that movie's amazing. Yeah. I prefer that still to this new one. But it, honestly, honestly, it was really close for me. I don't think it was. I mean, it was somewhat close, but anyway, I just feel like yeah. there's a lot more. Well, we're gonna talk about, it, but there's a lot more story in Furiosa than in yeah. Mad Max. I mean, yeah, because basically, the in Fury Road, we're introduced to this character named Furiosa, Furiosa. And, and she's like a woman lost from this perfect the, the green place right yeah it's like this call. perfect civil civilization in the apocalypse that you know they have gra- green grass they have water fruit. they have fruit and everything you kind of get like a little bit about her in fury road she's played by um charlie theron uh yeah. but this movie like fully goes into her backstory explains everything you know takes away from the sort of mystery of her character which in some cases could be a bad thing but i think it works here because i i do like seeing you know how she got to that point how she lost her arm thing that no i I mean this prequel makes sense just because you don't you know so little about the character in the movie you hear like bits and pieces about her past but like nothing really concrete yeah so it starts basically in her childhood and I honestly was surprised by how how much that child actress was in the film. I, like, Anya yeah. Taylor-Joy she doesn't like even a show quarter. up. She was like in a quarter of the movie, probably. Probably right? more, honestly. I think yeah. at least like a third. I feel like really, Anya Taylor-Joy gonna... didn't show up until like an hour in, which I was surprised. Yeah. I mean, the movie's, for reference, the movie's two and a half hours. Yeah. I don't know if you noticed this, but I'm pretty sure they used some sort of like visual effects on the child actress to make her look more like... Anya. Really? No, yeah, I didn't notice that. I think honestly. they did something with like her lip. If you look it up, I, I read something about it. But if you look up a picture of the actress, you'll you'll notice like she looks a little bit different than how she looks in the movie. Yeah. Um I know the casting of Anya Taylor Joy. Charlie Theron was actually apparently like annoyed about it because she, really? she wanted to play the character, but I feel like she not that age. she's old or anything, but if but you're gonna t- out of the Yeah. And I think Anya did like a fantastic job. No, Anya was she, great. And she she really didn't have a lot of dialogue. No. I think I think she only has like George Miller said it. I think she has like thirty, 30 lines of dialogue, less. maybe. Yeah. Probably if not less. Um But yeah, she did she did a fantastic job and she also looked the part. Yeah. I Just agree. in general, I love how they they dove more into the world. I feel like there's a lot more world building. Yeah, you learn more about, like... Well, we didn't even talk about the villain yet. Uh, so, 
the villain, what's his, Damascus is his name, right? Yeah, Damascus. And he's kind of like an opposing, I would say, warlord in the Mad Max world. Kind of like an opposite to a Mortis. Not an opposite, but like another, like a Mortis Joe type of figure. Like he's, he's the head of like a big. Uh, he's like a big uh, clan of people. Yeah. But they all have like really unique, like all the costumes are like really cool and unique. Yeah, I really I liked how they included a Morton Joe in this as well, as well as his sons. I thought his sons were yeah. cool. And it's they the same just, actors, I believe, too. A Morton Joe is a different actor, I think, because I'm pretty sure the the actor passed away who played him originally. I could be completely wrong, but I'm gonna double check that right now. I'm almost think, positive it's a different actor. I think actor. you're wrong. Mm, no, I think I'm right. Let but, me see. Let's see a Morton Joe. A Morton Joe in. Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah, see, this guy died December 2020. So who th- who plays him in? Honestly, oh. you could, I mean, not that you could, you could really tell, but yeah, he's yeah, so the guy who played him in the in Fury Road was Hugh Keys Burn. Could definitely be mispronouncing that. And then in this film, he's played by. Lackey Holme. Also could be mispronouncing that. Yeah. But I thought he was great. I also liked uh, her like love interest. Seems Praetor- yeah. Praetorian Jack. Yeah, he he's was a, cool. He's apparently going to be in um, the Mad Max Fury Road sequel. It's called Mad Max The Wasteland. Is that actually getting... I, I saw stuff about that, but I don't think it's going to get made. You think because of the box office? Yeah. I don't know. I'm up in the air because apparently I was looking out I, I, when sucks. I saw the like, I would I would love that. That'd be awesome. Yeah, when I saw the box office for this and how like bad it's doing, um it made like what thirty million domestic opening weekend. Yeah. It's which at, is, oh, it's not good, no. Yeah, no. Was, I don't which know if you're gonna say the stat, but Yeah, was it was what it made a made hundred and twenty so far? No, but it's the thirty million Memorial Day weekend is like Oh like the lowest, yeah. The lowest since, uh, I think they said, like, Star Wars, one of the original Star Wars trilogy films. And that's not, like, accounting for inflation. That's, like, how awful it did. Pretty insane. Um, Sucks. Because the movie's great, like... Yeah, but I was, um, I was looking into, like, Mad Max Fury Road's box office. Apparently that also underperformed, and they still made Furiosa. Yeah, so. I mean, I, I would love. What, is Tom Hardy? What is what is Wasteland supposed to be about? Uh, I'll read the. There's a synopsis on Letterbox. It says, "Mad Max: The Wasteland is the upcoming fifth film in the Mad Max franchise and the prequel to Mad Max: Fury Road." The okay, Wasteland so. follows Max in the year before Fury Road, and it's said to involve a young mother and plenty of action. Oh, so it's a prequel to Fury Road. It takes place the year before. You think but, Anya's going to pop up in it? I f- don't they meet in Fury Road, though? Yeah, they no? meet in Fury Road. They don't have yeah, to meet no. they can, to, for them to be in the movie. Well, it says in the cast list, it says that Tom Burke is going to be in it as Praetorian Jack. Yeah. I'm assuming Amortis Joe is going to be in it as well. Yeah. Yeah. A Morton. A Morton. Sorry. Um, there you go. Uh. But yeah, I guess just to to get back to the film itself, I feel like I I prefer Fury Road because it focused more on the action. There's more insanity. Not that there is a lack of that in this. There still is like it's awesome of, yeah. action scenes. Um, I like that the the uh, the little like what the are those people dude. called? Yeah, what are those people called? I forget. Dwarfism. The people with dwarfism. No, <laughs> no, not those Why? people. I'm talking about. The silver people in the movie. Oh, like um, Immortus Joe's, uh, like henchmen or go- whatever. Uh, they have a name. I I forget their name. Uh, let me look yeah, that was actually that. I don't know if you knew this, but that actor was like, he was he went viral a couple years ago for like getting bullied because of his his condition or something. Yes, yeah, I saw that. Is, that's is a that cool true? story. Yeah, yeah is that actually it is. true. Yeah, I saw something that like it was fake. That like it wasn't a real. Like I bleed. think it was true. I mean, if it was fake, I feel like he wouldn't be in the movie. I hope not. But, 
Yeah, he was great. I loved his scenes. He actually, yeah. that's like one of the best. He had like a decent amount of, yeah, yeah. When he, uh, because they, they do that thing point? where they like shoot the spray into their mouth and like sacrifice themselves. Yeah. That's like one of the cool things about a Morton Joe is like his people will, they like want to kill themselves for him. They like don't even care. Yeah. There's that scene where they first pull up where, uh, the dude just fucking. Damascus and. Is that his name? That's Aaron? Yeah. No, Damascus. Damascus when him, and like all, all his like henchmen pull up. Yeah. On they the pull motorbikes. Up, or no, Dementis, sorry. Dementis, um, that was yeah, it. Dementis. Um, so yeah, they pull up to, to Morton Joe's place. And they're, he's saying, like, oh, your, your men are all weak, whatever. And Morton Joe's like, just pick any one of my men. And he picks one, and the dude just, like, kills himself. So it just shows, like, a Morton Joe has so much power over yeah, them yeah, that, yeah. that like, they will literally kill themselves in order to, like, Please a, him. appease him. Yeah, yeah. I thought that was really cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, like I said, the action's great. Um, visually... Obviously stunning. I loved like the set. Not I mean, obviously it wasn't practical a lot of it in terms of the sets, but no, but it was like very well. I loved like the landscape, just how everything looked, how this post apocalyptic world, world. Yeah, looks. I agree. Uh, did you, have did, you a... did you like uh, Chris Hemsworth as Dementis? I thought he was pretty good. Yeah, I, I had like... Yeah, I haven't seen him in a villain role. I know he's done others, but. Yeah, I, I, I know. Yeah, this is my first time watching him in a villain role, but he he knocked out of the park. He was great. Yeah, he almost he, he almost great. reminded me of like a. He almost had like a a, a Johnny Depp kind of like Jack Sparrow. Yeah, uh, I could see that's that. the kind of vibe his character gave off in the movie. Like he would be in like at a serious meeting with a mortis, like they're trying to whatever. The goose talk about bullet farm, whatever the fuck, and he's just like you know. Not paying attention, just doing whatever. Yeah, I did like him. Yeah, I feel like people were. I saw on Twitter people were saying he's kind of like the inverse of of Max. He's like what Max could have become due to the wasteland, and then they're like supposed to be inverse of oh. each other. Yeah, but like yeah. I said, I don't. I don't really. I I haven't seen those original Mad Max yeah. movies, so I feel like I don't know that much about the character. Yeah, same. Um. Did you have a favorite scene? Um, I know because they're just so, like all the action scenes are like really, really well done. I mean, the the one the fight at the bullet farm is really good at the end. Yeah, that's a great one. Yeah, where she goes back for for Praetorian yeah. to save him. Yeah, I really like the scene. It's more of like a, a shot and like a moment rather than a scene. But at, it, I think it's like directly following that when um. When whatever they dip and then they get caught up to by Dementis. When Anya loses, gets her arm like fucked up. Oh, and that she... shot where like it gets all dusty and then uh, Dementis looks over at her arm and at her, like where she was hung up and it's yeah, just no. her arm is hanging there. Yeah, and she's not there. I thought that was great. There was a really a lot of good shots in the movie. Another good one was the uh, the scene when so for reference also. Uh, Dementis kills uh, Furiosa's mom in the movie, but he makes yeah. her watch it. But like, it's they don't really. How do they execute her? Doesn't it, she's kind of just like they tie her up to a stake and like light it on fire or fire. something. But like the shot of like her, you see the reflection of it in her eyes. That was a really yeah. good shot. That was great. Yeah, it's a ton. Yeah. And it but, just sucks because like the movie is really good and so like on so many levels like. Like visually, like the fights are great. It's a really good story. The act, the acting is fantastic, and it's just not making any money. Yeah, um, I just don't understand. Like, what is it gonna take? It kind of it's it's a very like pessimistic view on what the movie industry is gonna become because, yeah. like, this is unheard of for something to perform this bad, and it's like a big blockbuster, a summer blockbuster. And I feel like it had generally good buzz. It's got great reviews, and it still can't make money. So, like, what is the answer? Yeah. How do we I get saw, people? People are saying the like, um, because Mad Max is more of like a niche kind of following, that that's why it didn't do that well. And 
Uh, but yeah, I mean, but the move, I don't know, like a giant blockbuster action film in the middle of. Yeah, but even like Planet of the Apes, for example, it did well. But, but yeah, like, not nothing compared like that. Even Godzilla it's, like Kong, fun. it's not even going to like sniff a billion. Yeah. Like a couple like, years ago, like in 2018, if they would have released. I mean, you think if they would have released Furiosa back then, it, I think it would have made like probably like 500, 600 at least. Yeah. At least profit. I think so, especially like, because uh, like I said, Bad Max Fury Road didn't perform that well, I don't think. But if this was like the sequel and people knew that the first one was good already, especially with yeah. Anya, I think that, you know, it probably would have at least performed a lot better <laughs> than I agree. it did. I agree. But yeah, I don't really, I don't really know what else to get into about this movie, just because a lot of it is just those action sequences um, yeah, but yeah, <laughs> I don't know if you have anything else you want to add. I like favorite characters. I feel like Man, it's, it's yeah, Furioso it's probably, Furioso, yeah. but I really like Immortan Joe, and I like I enjoyed his his two sons a lot. Same thing with uh, Dementis as well. Like I really really enjoyed his character. Yeah, I like how he had sort of like a soft spot to him with that teddy bear. Yeah, it was like that continuing imagery of the teddy bear. Yeah, honestly, another scene I forgot about is the the like before she kills him, like that kind of where they bicker back and forth for like twenty minutes. Yeah, that, that was, was another great. really good scene. When she just chases him through the desert, he thinks he's safe. Yeah, she like unloaded his fucking gun and everything. And yeah, that that scene that like that ending scene also when. He he uh, pulls the knife out of her boot, and she like oh, already she... took the blade off. Yeah, because she she was just fucking with him at that point. Yeah, I forget how does she end up killing him? Does she just shoot him? She it doesn't, no. It doesn't she like... um, it's it's never really stated, but they say that like she pan- she plants the peach tree in him, and it grows. Oh out of him, yeah, yeah. Which I I was really cool. I thought that was yeah. Sick. That was that was a cool like that was cool imagery. Just like yeah. the disheveled. Dementis with the tree growing out of him. Yeah. Did they feast on those apples though? I don't know if that's safe. I don't know. But you know, I mean, it's also the they were human blood sausages, so Yeah. It's probably fire. Yeah. Um what's it called? Yeah, so I, I haven't seen Fury Road in like not not a long time, but since you were just refreshed on it, I forget. In Fury Road it's it's revealed that like that perfect society that yeah it doesn't exist from. anymore it, it doesn't exist anymore yeah Do they explain like how no what i'm assuming to that like a, i guess another like faction of people found it and took it over or something yeah but they never really it's not stated why like what happened yeah i got you one other thing that i want to just briefly talk about i felt like some of it a lot of points didn't like the main section of her um, pretending to be a dude. I feel like they would have been able to, you know, notice that. Like, yeah. she's every time she has to pee, she has to like go do it in private. She doesn't say a single word. There's like that scene where she's she don't do the yeah, the yeah. truck pee and then. But also, you know, it's a means to an end. Yeah, no. So I can respect it. I also thought it was yeah, interesting how they showed the um. What's it called? Like how they treated women in that society where they just had them kind of... It, it seemed like they treated them... not Obviously, they didn't treat them well, but they were like clean and well-kept. But they were just like per, only used well, those, to reproduce. Those women, but the woman like in the rain that... Like living in, I guess, a Morton Joe's uh, society. Like, like the human... Like remember that when she wakes up and she's like in the tunnel... With the yeah, woman, she has like, the maggots, maggots on her arm. eating her wounds. Yeah, like, like those that... women are like fucking. Yeah, yeah. But what? Well, so there was that one scene where one of the women gives birth, and it's like a girl, or, or no, yeah. it was like a weird. It was a. It was, mu- like a, it was mutated. It was like a mutated, and they're like, "Oh, like that's it." So do they? Is it implied that they they kill her basically because she can't produce an offspring, like a male offspring? I think so. Yeah. Well, not a yeah, male she, offspring, but just like she can't produce like a living, mutated. like living offspring, you know. Yeah, yeah, I found that interesting. Like, I just thought it was cool how they how they showed that aspect of the of society 
and yeah. like where the children came from and how obviously a bunch of them are going to be mutated because you know this the, this the world apocalypse. is so polluted, yeah i think it's like an, it's implied there was like some type of nuclear yeah because like the world fall. is just like a desert wasteland yeah that's another thing I was gonna say. I just watched the Fallout show. There was a lot of moments that like reminded me of that show and the games. Well, it's a similar kind of, you know. Yeah, it's a post-apocalyptic. Um, that type of thing, you know. Yeah. But yeah, all in all, I did really enjoy it. Just not as much as Fury Road. I, I think it's for me personally. I mean, I just rewatched it. I think they're close. Yeah, only only get... because I I just I feel like in Furiosa like you still get the action, but there's also like not that that Mad Max is a bad story, but I feel like this is a better story than Mad Max. If that makes sense. No, I, I would agree with that. It's definitely a more intimate story and like more personal to Furiosa's character. Yeah, Mad Max. I feel like they are not Mad Max because there's a bunch of Mad Maxes, but Fury Road. They uh, they kind of focus on a, a a bit more characters than just him. Like, you have yeah. Nicholas Holt's character as well, his whole story arc with, you know... I forget what those guys are called. Those, like, white guys. I don't, like... They have look it up. Let me look it up on the... Like, yeah, on me... Mad Max. Like, what it says. He's called. Uh... I'm looking at the Furiosa cast. It says... There's a guy named John Howard that plays the People Eater. Who, who the hell was that? That's the dude with like that. The, he has a metal thing on his nose and oh, his bro. Apparently, I, I is that actually him or no? Wait, I think so. Yeah, that's the dude that like he has like the nipple. Remember, like when uh, there's that scene where the mentis has like his nipples ripped off and he like gets all like freaked yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. Trying to see something. Because if that's the case, I'm pretty sure that guy was like the prime minister of like some European country or something. Let me see. John Howard. Uh... Says dropped out of medicine and law at university. I don't know if that guy's the people eater. Look it up online. Let's see. Because I saw something on Twitter that there was, like, one of the people in Mad Max was, um, like, the prime minister of some country at one point. That's kind of nuts. Let me look it up. I'm pretty sure it's this John Howard guy. Let's see. I don't know. I could just completely be making that up, but I swear I saw that somewhere. I mean, it's possible. Furiosa. I don't want to get too off topic here, but I just no. want to yeah. figure this out really quick. John Howard, the people eater. Let's see. I think there might be a different John Howard. Maybe. Or maybe that was just a joke that people were saying. I mean, that's possible, too. Because they have the same name. Yeah. But... All right, anyways. Let's get to ratings. I just, sorry, I just got distracted by the people eater. No, you're good. Really quick. Dude, their names are so funny. Yeah, the names are, like, out of console, like, wacky. Big Jilly, Smeg. That, that, uh, the little dude that was like, it says he was also in 3,000 Years of Longing. Yeah, I saw that too. I don't and apparently the, the child actress who played Furiosa was in 3,000 Years of Longing too. I don't remember. Dude, his, his character's name was Bobby Knocker Warpup. That's so fire. All right, anyways, yeah, we're getting really off topic. Yeah. Here, but... So what would you rate this? Um, I gave it a four and a half, so uh, nine out of ten. I I really really liked it. I just think it's so well executed on so many levels. 
I think it's the third best film to come out this year. Besides, I still think Challengers and Dune 2 are better, but still, like, miles above a lot of the stuff that's coming out this year. Mm-hmm. No, I'm, I'm like, a little bit lower than You're you on it. on it. Yeah. I gave it a four star, so an eight out of ten. For reference, I gave Fury Road a four and a half star. Um, I like gave I Fury said, it. It's I'm like, sorry. yeah, let me just finish. But, but like I said, it's it's technically like near perfect, similar to how Fury Road is, just how the film is is crafted and how everything is executed is really good. I just didn't connect to it as much as I did Fury Road because there wasn't as much of that action on screen. There was a, a ton. But it did get more into the character stuff, which is good. But it's not like what I'm there for, yeah. you know. And it also was pretty su- decently longer than Fury Road. This is like two and a half hours. Oh yeah, yeah. This Fury is... Road was only like two hours, so we're talking yeah. about thirty extra minutes. Um, but yeah, I think Anya Taylor Joy did a great job, and it is definitely it's in my top ten films of the year for sure. I thought it was great, but. Yeah, still 8 out of 10. Yeah. All right. All right, so we can move on from that now to some movie news over the past two weeks. I feel like we have a lot. A couple things I'm excited to talk about. Are you are you looking at this list of stuff? Yeah. You, you want to start with the first thing? Because this, I feel yeah. like you'll... So, uh... Yeah, we uh we finally got the reveal, which I actually forgot about. It kind of quietly released um, the Knives Out three title, which is called Wake Up Dead Man, and we actually got a pretty decent chunk of the cast. That mm-hmm. like makes up, I think, the bulk of our news this week. Yeah. Um, no, we could go through this first, but I was referring to something, something well, else. The the X Men film in development. Oh wait! What? Oh, I'm sorry. Roll up. I'm, no, that's all right. I, no, yeah, yeah, my bad. My Let's bad. do the knives out stuff quick because you mentioned yeah. it, and I a bunch of the cast got released. I don't know why when I saw the. I guess because of, like, I don't know. Whatever. Anyway, but yeah, we can go through the cast. Uh, so the first two people that it came out got cast were, um, Josh O'Connor, which is previously just in Challengers, mm-hmm. and you you love her, Kaylee Spaney, which was in. She's gonna be an alien. She played Priscilla, right? Yeah, she was Priscilla. She, she was in Civil War. She was in Civil War. So she's having. I'm kind of down with her just and popping she's, up. And she's going to be really. in Beef season two as well. Oh, really? Her I and Charles know. Melton are playing a couple. And Jake Gyllenhaal and Anne Hathaway are playing the yeah, other couple, right? Yeah. Wow. So damn. definitely excited for that. But yeah, after those two got. Those two alone, I was like, damn, like, yeah. this is shaping up to be pretty good. Then we got. Okay, this, this is a rumor, that, though. This, I don't this think it's true anymore. But yeah. apparently it was Tom Hardy and Lindsay Lohan were rumored to star. But apparently they got replaced with Jeremy Renner and Mila Kunis. Still great, you know. Yeah. But Tom Hardy would have been cool. I, yeah. I'm a big fan of Jeremy Renner. He's one of my favorite actors. I was, su- I was surprised when I saw that headline because like, I didn't even know that he recovered from his injury. It, I know it had been a while, but apparently Jeremy Renner, like... He was. He basically died. Like he yeah, like flatlined, yeah, really and they brought yeah, really. him back, which yeah. is pretty crazy. This is going to be, I think, his return. I know he's done some. He's had some like TV stuff releasing here and there. Yeah, I, this is like his first kind of, uh, like big movie. Mm-hmm. I, uh, since his injury, I feel like. Yeah. So I'm excited for him. There's a yeah. couple others. I didn't send them in here, but. Yeah, oh, actually, the, the most recent one, drop, Josh Brolin just got cast. That was, like, the, the newest one to come out. Yeah. I don't know if you saw that. Yeah, no, no, I just saw that. I'm going to look um, now. I should have prepared this before, but I forgot the other people. Most, I feel like there was... Um, uh, let's see. see. Neil Kunis, Jeremy Renner. Oh, Glenn Close. Andrew Scott. Oh, yeah, oh, Andrew yeah. Scott. That was the other big one. Um, let me check on Letterbox if they like updated the uh the cast. Yeah, hold on. I feel like Andrew Scott's gonna be the killer. That's your prediction? Yeah, it's just I don't know. I feel like it's gonna be some crazy like double twist, kind of how Glass Onion mm-hmm. was. 
Kerry Washington. But I like I like I like Josh O'Connor is perfect for this because he's so like manipulative in, in challengers. Yeah, like he fucks with uh, with art like so much. I, I I just think he's like this film is like this is a good fit for him. Yeah, I agree. I w- I had seen him in like one or two other things before, but I'm not like too familiar with him. Yeah. So oh, Kerry Washington, I'm not very familiar with her, but she was just cast in it as well. Yeah, I've only seen her in Django. Which and then, uh, Daryl McCormick was also cast. Yeah, I think he's famous from, like, one of those Netflix. Yeah, I figure it's a lot of Netflix people because, like, it's it's a yeah. Netflix movie, you know. Like, I saw him... yeah, I saw him in this in this movie from like a year or two ago. Yeah, he was pretty good. But. Yeah, so I'm excited. I mean, I, I wasn't personally the biggest fan of Glass Onion. I still liked it. I think it was like a, maybe a 6 or 7 out of 10 for me, but compared to the first, which was like a 9 out of 10. Yeah. Um, Fair. Fair. I think it got like a little bit too political with like the obvious, um, what's the word, parallels to like Elon Musk and like these tech billionaires and stuff. But I understand that's also like the point of it in a way. Yeah, but it was just a little too much for me. I think. Sure. So I hope I hope they dial back a little bit and make something more similar to the first, where it's obviously there's still political aspects yeah. of that film, but I feel like it more was just a fun murder mystery. Yeah, I like not that like I like I understand it as well, but I it, I feel like the movies it's at its best when they lean more into the murder mystery stuff. Yeah. So I feel like with all this stuff coming out, they gotta start filming soon. That's probably why all this yeah, yeah. is getting announced. It's a twenty twenty five, so it's gotta but then again, I feel like the, these don't it's not like it has a long like post production and stuff. Like it's all Yeah, there's not gonna be a ton of visual effects or yeah. anything like that. Yeah, it's all dialogue. So. Yeah. But um right. Yeah, so yeah. This, you could talk about that the X Men thing that I was just talking yeah. about. Yeah. So we finally got our um our X Men um writer for the, the the live action film which is going to be in development uh michael leslie right leslie yeah um he re- previously wrote the new hunger games movie which was actually pretty good so yeah i was a big fan of that yeah so we'll see um i'm hoping that it leans like mo- more into the how like 97 is like with how they handle the team but we'll see you know i have really high expectations i feel like a lot of people do just because like the x-men movies you just previously watched them i mean some of them are good but i feel like for the most part that most of them aren't yeah i mean the first three the first one's good the second one second is one's really, really good. good i don't like the third one all third i thought i thought it was still solid it had like its issues obviously but then from there it pretty much yeah, just it's... sucks besides well, actually, first class no, and days of future past yeah, first class and Days of Future Class are good, but after that, it's shit. Yeah, like Apocalypse so sucks. Uh, what's the other one? Dark Phoenix. Dark Phoenix sucks. Yeah. X Men Origins. Wolverine. But I just watched that seen... the other day. It's so bad. Yeah, that's like yeah, it's horrible. The Wolverine but trilogy yeah. gets better as it goes on. Yeah. Um. But yeah, for this, this is the MCU X Men. Yeah. In case we didn't say that, but I've also saw rumors that apparently, like, it might take place in a different universe. Like, because it's kind of hard could. to explain. Because this is the dilemma with this is like, why if they're gonna hate them for like being mute? Because the whole thing is like people hate them. Like that's like the whole X Men thing is like mm-hmm. they save people they hate. But who, heroes have existed already for like mo- a long time already in this world. So I feel like it's kind of weird to just people randomly just start hating on people with powers. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So That's I don't not... know how the how they're gonna handle that. I mean, I yeah. guess they could say like, "Oh, it's because they're like natural." Like they could just say mutants just start popping up all of a sudden. Like people are born with powers. Like because that really hasn't happened in the MCU where people are just born like they have like two normal parents and they're just born with powers. Yeah, I'm trying to think, but there's not really a lot of heroes that are like that. Like Spider Man, like you can. All, I mean, not really born. He gets bit. Yeah, he gets but bit. He gets... I think the those superheroes are called like mutates. That's yeah. the term. Like Hulk's a mutate. Like Spider Man's a mutate. Yeah, it's like some uh, I think I did see that before. It's like when they get their ability through 
not through birth, but through some other else. event. Yeah. Yeah, that was but one of yeah. the things that I never understood about the X Men is like I I understand it's mainly just for like writing purposes for it to have the allegory about social injustice. Yeah. But in like a world of superheroes, why would mut- mutants be like targeted and hated when there's all these other? Because they heroes? say like that because it like pe- they're dangerous. Like you people are just born mutants, so like they're da- like you could be born mutant and you don't use your powers correctly and like kill your family. Think about like how. In in Gen V, like how yeah, I was just gonna say that. Yeah, well, Gen V is actually it's a rip on the X Men. Like, what's the university? Gold? What's it called? Golden University? Godolkin. Godolkin. Right? Yeah. Godolkin is supposed to be uh, Professor X School of the Gifted. It's like a, it's a rift on that. Yeah, I got it. I'll see how they handle it, but I I think in a new universe probably makes the most sense. Or yeah. if they do it after Secret Wars, they can I say... Would not, I think that's the best course of action. But I feel like... Do you think it's gonna the movie's going to come out before Secret Wars? Um, Probably not. Because I feel like Secret Wars is what, supposed to film at the end of the year, apparently, right? No, no, that's Avengers 5. So that's five. Kang Dynasty. So it could come out between Kang Dynasty and Secret Wars. That yeah. way they could, like, show up in Secret Wars. Maybe they'll do, like, that, and then Secret Wars, like... Because, you know, it's supposed to be, like, all, all the worlds, like, collide. Yeah, they could bring them in at the mm-hmm. end or something. Yeah, yeah. So maybe they'll, like, have that history of always being hated. Like, them already established. Yeah. But the X-Men are sick. Like, there's... Like, I wish... I'm excited for the future of the MCU, because, like, they're, so, they're really cool. Like, the X-Men. All the stories yeah. are really good. Yeah, it's like a, sick, you know. It's just an entire box of goodies that like yeah. hasn't been opened yet. Yeah, they just also waiting. have like their their Thanos basically, which is a problem. Well, he's not like the same type of film, but Apocalypse is like a, mm-hmm. that's like another. They do like an Avengers movie with that. Yeah, they can they have can, like their like, own Dark universe. Phoenix, like could even be like its own kind yeah, of. Yeah, we'll see. Movie. I feel like Dark Phoenix will be something. I feel like yeah. they've learned their lesson that you have to wait a while before you do that. Yeah, both times the movie sucked. So. Yeah, but but um, but yeah. Yeah, I, I want to move on to the next thing because this we have to talk about this, bro. This is like my antithesis. Oh this, yeah, this the, piece yeah. of news, the renaissance of the rock. The uh, we got our first look at at Dwayne Johnson. They call him in the post Dwayne Johnson. They don't call him the Rock. The Rock. He, yeah, he's gonna be in his A twenty four film, The Smashing Machine, Machine, which is directed by Benny Safty, one of the Safty Bros. And he looks like unrecognizable. Yeah, he's got he's got hair. It looks like he has some sort of makeup, not or prosthetic like on prosthetic his face. on. Like he does not look like him. And apparently, this is going to be a serious role. Yeah. So this is his Oscar push. He said he's tired of making these stinkers that he gets made fun of by people like me yeah. for. Yeah. And Let's see, maybe you think he's going to shut you up? No. I don't know. I got to respect it. I, I really respect that he's doing this and that he's yeah. at least trying. He's stepping out of his comfort zone. He's willing to become vulnerable in a movie instead of always acting like he's this giant, like yeah. jacked man who's indestructible. Um, yeah. You know what's weird? So, Excuse what? me. Sorry. Um, he, put, he did hair for this, but he didn't do hair for Black Adam. I mean, yeah, I don't find that weird. I, uh, I find it like no, that makes you know sense. he talked like he's so pat. You know, he acted like he was so passionate about the character. Like, he yeah, he told how he grew up watching him, not watching, him, reading about him. So it's like, why would you not? I don't know. Yeah, no, I mean, he should he should have done hair for Black Adam. Like, I'm not saying he shouldn't have, but I'm saying like I would more. Like, expect what what him. about this makes him? I don't know because it's supposed to be this, you know this renaissance of him and he's actually yeah. going to be serious taken seriously so he's willing to step out of his comfort zone now but here i could see this going one of two ways it's just like a complete disaster yeah. and he sucks and it's just like laughable or he could genuinely no nah, i feel like he'll be he's gonna be because it's like he he was a wrestler isn't this a movie about a wrestler yeah. or a boxer no wrestler i think right? i think uh I don't know, because he's not wearing boxing gloves, but he's wearing some kind of gloves in that picture. It's probably, it's probably, uh... It's probably boxing. I don't, probably, I don't know. No, it's probably wrestling. They wear gloves in wrestling. I don't know. You're probably right, but... 
But I feel like that's like for him, he's a fucking rock. Like it's easy for him to relate to that. Yeah. Yeah. So I feel like it's, you know. It's Emily like Blunt's a, also in the film. Yeah, she's going to play his, like. I guess his love interest. Yeah. But yeah, they worked together on Jungle Cruise previously. Yeah. But yeah, I'm really excited for that. I, like whether the movie's great or if it's a dis- I don't, complete but disaster, even I'll be seated. Regardless was a rock, I like Benny Sefty anyway. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. Next little bit of news we could briefly touch on. It was confirmed that The Vision is getting a series in 2026, and Paul Bettany will return. They also have a showrunner who yeah. is known for Star Trek Picard. His name is Terry. Which Mattel- apparently was, from what, I've, from what I've heard on law, like the census online is that. Like that, whatever season he was the showrunner of was like the best season of the show. From just from like the general, like what I read online about it. Yeah. Um, My only thing is with Marvel yeah, like saying why, like why, we have to like, we have to cut production of unnecessary why, projects and all this. Like why Vision? Yeah, this I feel like the only reason about. why is that it it's probably it's going to tie into something else. It's the only like they want people to see it for a reason. That's got to be. It could maybe tie like into Young Armor Avengers, Wars. maybe Young Avengers, I don't Armor know. Wars. One of those. I don't know. Is it bad that, like, I'm so much more... That's a little off topic, but, like, I'm so much more excited for the DCU stuff than... I mean, that makes sense, because that's, like, a completely fresh start. Yeah. It is something new and exciting. Like, MCU is... They're treading water right now, so we'll see what happens. But even on the hiring side, dude, like, look at the directors they've got so far. For the first four movies that are going to be in the... Well, I don't know about four, but... Like, the first four titles that they announced, their movies, of the directors they got so far. So it's James Gunn. They got uh, James Mangold for the Swamp thing. Which you can argue he's he's probably, if he was an MCU director, he'd probably be up there as one of the best ones. He might be washed, though. He might be washed. You think so? After no. Indiana Jones. I think that that's more of a product of the studio. Yeah. I, th- yeah. I still have faith in him. He made Logan. I think his Jedi movie's going to be good. Him. Hopefully. All right, then they got uh, who's the guy they got for Super for Supergirl? Terry Gilliam. Yeah, but he's. I mean, I don't really know anything about him. <laughs> he's good though. He's I, good. I see what you're trying to say, bro. I understand. Like, I feel like yeah. there's more talent. I'm not know. Terry, bro. Not Terry Gilliam. What am I saying? I don't know his name. I just I don't but, know. I don't know why I said that. Hold on. Why did I say that? I don't know. Who who is it? I don't know the guy who it was. That's why I was asking. Craig Gillespie. He I don't did, know why he, I said Terry I know he did I, I, Tonya and... Uh, yeah, yeah, and Cruella. Mm-hmm. I guess because Gil in the last name. Maybe. But, but yeah, I don't know. Marvel just... Like, I'm getting off topic, but... Um, yeah. To me, this seems unnecessary. Yeah. I'll still watch it just because like, I, I watch everything that they put out. I haven't, I haven't been watching one of like as much as like what, what was the I didn't watch uh, the last thing that they did was Echo. I didn't, I didn't. I watched like the first episode. And that was it. I wasn't a fan of it. That was the worst thing they've ever put out in my opinion. You know, like it, it was like one of the most viewed things they put out this year. Yeah, and it's crazy because it only cost forty million to make. Really? Hmm. Yeah. Are they going to do more shit like that? Like I feel like that appeals to like the general. It's just like a. You know, yeah. they see more than like, the title. Yeah. It wasn't and very like, like superhero y and like I think this Marvel spotlight banner that they're doing is gonna help with distinguishing yeah. like stuff that just the average person could watch without having to have any previous context. Yeah. So But yeah, we can move on. Did you like Echo? No, I hate it. bro, I just said it. I think it's the worst thing they did. Oh, yeah. Anyway, moving on. Yeah, this one we could um, just briefly touch on. You you wanna do the the Moana trailer? Yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, the Moana two Mo, Moana two trailer got released. What apparently the movie was originally going to be like a Disney Plus show, which already is red flags in my head immediately. But um, so yeah, they're making a Moana movie, but um. The, first, the the trailer actually did well, like in terms of viewership. I think it was like 
the most viewed Disney Pixar trailer, like to really the views in the first 24 hours, like broke the record for them or something like that. Yeah, I think because Moana is one of the more successful Disney animation movies. Yeah, where and it, it's only that one movie, and like people, there's that one song. It's a pretty big following. Sings. Yeah. I forgot what it's called. It's like uh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah. Yeah. I still haven't seen the first one. Yeah, neither have I. I'm gonna check it out. But yeah. from did you watch this trailer? Yeah, I. I mean, visually it looks good. Like, yeah, it looks know. all right. The animation looks all right. Um, I, I don't also, really like, know. Yeah, like, I don't enough about the story. The, the first one, like, I don't know the story at all, so I don't really know. You know. Yeah, I found it weird though. Like, no one said anything or like any of the voice voices yeah. for anyone until like. 10 seconds left in the trailer or something. It's just, it, I feel like it's going to be like a Frankenstein kind of, they just smash it together. Like, cause it, it was supposed to be like three different, it was supposed to be like a mini series, maybe three episodes. Yeah. It's definitely going to make a lot of money though. You I think so? Feeling. I think it is. Yeah. Well, inside out is tracking for like a hundred million over the weekend. Hopefully yeah. I got to rewatch the, the original. Did I got to watch that as well. And no, I started it. But, yeah, no, I just wanted to to briefly touch on that because that trailer yeah. came out. But um, I, I don't know if you want to talk about the next thing. Yeah, this next soon. thing yeah. is... So last week, or last episode, we did a X-Men fan cast. And the actor that I chose for Cyclops, we talked about. He's relatively unknown. Um, he's starting to get bigger now, and his name is uh, Nicholas Galatine. He was just in uh, uh, The Idea of You. And he was in the... Anne um... Hathaway. The other, the other movie, Bottoms. Bottoms. Yeah. And I was like, this guy would be a great Cyclops. Like, I could see him getting buff. He's got, like, the handsome look, whatever. And then all of a sudden, like, two days after, they announced that he got cast to play He-Man in the live-action Masters of the Universe movie. Yeah. So, I guess those Hollywood execs saw what I was thinking, too. They saw the vision. Because yeah. He-Man is, like, this insanely jacked, jacked handsome like, yeah. dude. What happened is, so, wasn't uh, someone else going to play him at some point? I think there was rumors of Zac Efron. No, nah, like, somebody got cast as him when the Netflix one was going to be released. I forgot. Um, Noah something, I think. Noah. He's in, he played... Noah uh, Centineo? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think you're right, actually. That was a, I don't know if that was a rumor, if that was confirmed. That was like a while. I remember when that came out, like people were like, oh, he's definitely going to play Superman now because he's going to get jacked. Yeah. But the fact that he's doing this no, shows that he's, he's willing to do some of the goofy stuff. He's going to get jacked. You and, know, like, this is way more goofy than the X-Men, I'd say. Yeah, I think so. I also saw something that uh, Sasha Baron Cohen was in talks for Skeletor, who's like the villain. That would be pretty funny. Really? Yeah. I, I don't really that. know much about Masters of the Universe. Yeah, me neither. Like, I know it was popular like with our parents' generation. Yeah. I'm I pretty sure our dad probably watched it as a kid. Yeah. But He's probably one of those dweebs. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so then the next next thing we could chat about really quick was that... And this is a story that kind of just like came about yeah, and then all of a sudden... Where, like, yeah. I feel like they probably leaked it on purpose because they knew yeah. that was... Yeah. So apparently... It was announced, or not announced, but it got leaked or whatever, that Giancarlo Esposito, who previously told the world that he got an MCU role and he was going to appear soon, it was said that he's going to make his debut in Captain America Brave New World. So we were like, all right, they're doing reshoots right now, so I guess he's like an addition. Then all of a sudden, we get this set photo of him. And he has like... A bunch of blades like attached to his chest. Uh, so he has, like, like a, a big, coat. yeah, big trench coat. And it said that he's playing a villain. It's not. It doesn't jump out as like, oh, that's, Anyone in that's particular, this guy yeah. that you know. So who do you? I know you had some. I have a theory on who it was. Yeah. yeah so because he also he also said that I have like two theories on who it could be. Um, he also said that he's going to be in a Disney Plus show after this, which like. So my first thought was that he's going to be playing Bushmaster, which is this Moon Knight villain, kind of like he's like a lesser known villain. He's just basically like a, a mercenary. That's like it's the whole thing. But the reason why I think he's playing it was one, the outfit, he, like it's kind of he wears like a vest, kind of like he's wearing and like, you know, he's like same same ethnicity as the character in the comics. 
And he said he's going to be in a series, so I feel like Moon Knight Season 2 would be make perfect sense if he was playing the villain of that. But also, I don't... I don't, my, I have doubts on that too because I feel like how is he gonna? He's like older. How is he gonna do the action scenes and shit? I don't know. I mean, I honestly don't know, bro. They'll That's figure what that gets out. Me, like, they'll I don't figure know. that out. Yeah. Um. The only, but the only thing that's pretty cool about Bushmaster is that his probably his most famous thing in the comics is that Moon Knight like ripped his face off, like the his actual like skin of his face off. So, I don't know if they're going to do that in the movies, but that would be pretty cool. Him just getting his face ripped off? Yeah. I don't, didn't he get his like, face blown off? In, I feel like he's going to be an original character. It's, po- it's definitely possible. And, like, he's just going to appear in some other shit. Yeah. People also uh, think that he... My other theory is that he's going to play someone tied to, like, the, the, like the X-Men kind of... Definitely, like, a Weapon X program type of thing. Because apparently the plot of Captain America 4 is going to have to do with, like, the giant celestial in the in the middle of, the, like, the ocean. But it's going to be made of adamantium. That's, like, where they're going to say the origin of adamantium is from. So people are saying he could play, like, maybe, like, a... I don't know the guy that... In the movies, it's Stryker that, that turns him into Wolverine. But it's not that in the comics. It's another person. So people think he could yeah. be playing him. That makes more sense to me. I don't know. I I honestly have no idea. Yeah. I'm excited, though. I kind of wish he wasn't playing a villain. I want to see him do other stuff. Yeah, I mean, he said he wanted to play a hero. Yeah. I mean, he could turn into a hero, maybe. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway. Yeah, anyway, sorry. Sorry, I um, was a little distracted for a second. I just got a work text. No, nah, you're good. Answer. Um, um, yeah, I'll talk about the next thing. Okay. Uh, so, after the uh, the Exorcist movie came out in the fall, when it came out, the fall, right? This last fall? Yeah, I, I don't know. I Whatever. It, so, it did pretty poorly in terms of box office and review-wise. I We thought it was okay. I, I really it was, liked it. Yeah, I, I, gave, I enjoyed it. I gave it, it a four-star. I, I think it was three and a half or four-star as well. Like I I definitely didn't think it was bad, but um, they they decided to part ways with... um, What's his name? David Gordon Green. Yeah. Which, honestly, I, don't, I hate his Halloween trilogy, but I thought this was probably his strongest film. But I can't complain, because they're going to... They ended up hiring... Doctor Sleep and The Fall of the House of Usher from Netflix director Mike Flanagan who's like known for doing really good horror, and it said it's going to be a radical new take on The Exorcist, and he's going to write and write, direct, and produce the movie. So I'm pretty excited about this. I feel like it's going to be really good. Yeah. On one hand, I feel like I'm really surprised that they did this. I'm not. But also, that. like to have to have the balls to be like, yeah, we fucked up. We're not going to continue this trilogy. I got to respect it. Instead of them like, like pretending like it was great. I mean, I thought it was really good, but to the general public, instead of them pretending, like even that, even if they decide, they would would you really be excited if they did a sequel to that, or would you be more excited for like a new take on the on the Exorcist like IP? Not I don't want to say IP, but you know. I mean, I feel like that story was good as a standalone. Yeah, I agree. I it's like good on its own, but like I don't like I'm, the story's over. Like I don't want to. Yeah. You know, but a lot of no times reason. you see like studios and stuff not admitting when they're wrong and just continuing yeah. through with shit, even if it's bad. Like props to Universal. So, yeah, us. respect to them for like going in a new direction. I'm excited for this. I yeah. I and, haven't and... I haven't seen any of Mike Flanagan's stuff though. I know he's like well known in the horror community. Like yeah. I know who he is. And I know he has a good. He reputation. also did a uh, the show Black Mass on Netflix, which is good. Black Mask, Black Mass, Mass, Mass. 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 I Black. Yeah. Man, I don't know if it's called that or. No, no, I think it. Oh, Midnight Mass. Midnight Mass. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's I know like he a, has a yeah. couple like Netflix series, horror series. Yeah. Um, and Doctor Sleep, which is like the sequel to. Um, yeah, I heard that's good. The Shining, which is good as well. So yeah, I mean. Uh, he definitely has more respect than David Gordon Green in the horror community. People do yeah. not like him. I'm, Honestly, I'm, though, I thought that Let's Exorcist, that was like his best horror film. In my yeah, opinion. I think that was better than any of the Halloween remake movies. Yeah, he did, so. I agree. 
We'll see. There's a lot of. I mean, exorcism is is up now. What do you mean? They're doing up? a. They're like it's <laughs> it's popular. It's popping. I mean, I, I don't I don't know. I don't think it's popular, but I feel like there's a bun. There was a bunch of exorcism movies that came out over like the past year and a half. Oh, I thought you meant like the the property, like The Exorcist. Like uh, itself. no, I just mean exorcism in general. I mean, yeah, I guess the Pope's Exorcist. They're doing a second one, also. Yeah. Another Pope's. Ex- yeah, I don't. I don't know. Whatever. That's another. That's a story for another time. But. Yeah. Um. Anyway, I don't know if you want to talk about the next thing. Yeah, I'll I'll touch on this. So the the new Jurassic World movie, which I think actually began filming. Mm-hmm. I thought I saw a set photo. Began filming um, in Thailand like a couple of days yeah. ago. So Mahersh Ali is apparently cast in the film. So this cast is actually getting like really high. But I don't know like how quality actors. Put it yeah, like all the actors that have run through the mill of the this kind of story. I mean this this script. Everyone has been like extremely talented. I feel like. Yeah, even the people that passed on it have been like like Glenn Powell passed on it. He said, and he even said he said the script was good too. Yeah, but w- what are we looking at now? Dev Patel, Scarlett Johansson, Mahershali. Like we're talking about Oscar well, winners and like guy, Oscar uh, nominated. Don't make, what right? Don't make, don't make yeah. Oscar nominated last year. He's probably going to get nominated again this year for his movie uh, Sing Sing. Yeah, it's coming out. Um, I actually just saw the first trailer for that. I I heard a bunch of buzz about it. How it's gonna? What is it? It's a st- it's like about um, he's in prison and he starts like a theater program in a prison. No, it's like about he, I think he plays he plays the like the the abusive husband in The Color Purple. I think right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So very high quality actors in this. Yeah, and I'm just which is surprise surprise. No disrespect to. Chris Pratt or Bryce Dallas Howard, but like if these are definitely a, a step above. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like the the remember the the co stars of that were like Justice Smith and like you know, people you know. Yeah. Oh, I also want to mention I saw I saw the movie I saw the TV glow with Justice okay. Smith, and I'll give yeah. him his respect. I was a big hater of his, but I think he was he did pretty well in that movie. Yeah. And I, I that was in my top ten for the year, so you should definitely I check still that see out. That, yeah. But. Off topic a little bit, but I couldn't let the Justice Smith slander go on. Slander, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and then another actor in talks for another one of these franchise films. Chris Hemsworth is apparently in talks to star in the Transformers and G.I. Joe crossover film, which also apparently the director who directed the last Transformers movie dropped out, so he's not going to direct the sequel. Oh, he's not? No. Oh. So I thought he was pretty good, though. Yeah, I, I thought so too. Um, but anyways, is there any chance that he voices Optimus? No, no way. Because I, I know so. he's voicing him in the in that animated movie. Unless like, nah, he's one hundred percent playing GI Joe. You think so? Yeah. Well, maybe a villain. I hope he would play a villain. That'd be sick. No, I don't know. Him? About, I don't know enough about it. who's the main villain of GI Joe. Isn't it like Cobra or something like that? Snake Eyes? Snake Eyes? No, but isn't that organization Maybe. Cobra? I don't know. I don't know shit about it. I could be completely it. wrong. That was one of the funniest film moments of last year. In a it was just like so out of, like, if you would have told me there's a G.I. Joe post credit scene, like, I probably wouldn't believe you. Just like the way, the way that Anthony Ramos' character, like, just that whole scene was so funny. <laughs> he just, like, pulls the card and he's like, G.I. Joe. And then it just, like, cuts. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. so stupid. Um, yeah, but I, I, interesting that they're at least, they're casting this, so it's it's happening. Yeah, this is something that's happening. I mean, how did the first did the first one do well financially? Transformers. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think it had to. I think it did well. To, yeah, yeah. But all right, moving on. We actually just got this today, but yeah, it's our last bit of news. The first trailer for Venom. Three Venom: The Last Dance, and honestly, it looks like a complete mess. I can't even lie. Really? It looks fun. It looks fun. Yeah, but it all these fun. all the movie, all the Venom movies are a mess. Dude, it just looks like so all over the place. Yeah. Like I don't like what it. I I I watched that trailer and I know nothing about the movie besides like, I mean, not necessarily that's a bad thing, but like, 
what is Toxin doing? Why is he like locked up in a cage? And then I think why? it's so. I I think it's the. That's what I took away from it at least. So like the whatever the the scroll not scroll. I'm sorry. The symbiote like kind of planet is coming to Earth. Yeah, like, that part I got. Earth. Yeah, yeah. And so Toxin is like another one of the symbiotes. I'm assuming they have him like in captivity mm-hmm. or like capture him. But uh, for some reason, uh, it has to do with Venom. Like, that's why I think the, the movie's going to be, uh, like, they're trying to kill Venom, because it's connected to them coming to Earth. I think they're coming for Venom. Oh, that creature that he's fighting, is that supposed to be, like, a symbiote thing? It's supposed to be, just be I don't, I mean, I don't know if that's from the comics. I just thought that's some, like, just symbiote kind of creature, or something from his planet. Yeah. Listen, it's probably not going to be... like, But it's, it doesn't take... Bro, like, you can't look at this and take it seriously. Like, in the trailer, there's Venom dancing with that woman, the deli worker. Yeah, I really I like that. I thought that was fun. I actually really like that, too. I th- Like, I like when they lean into that part of it. Yeah, that. and the Venom horse was sick. Yeah. This cool part... Like, you can... You know, there's cool parts you could but take yeah, away from it just, the trailer. I don't know. It just looks like a mess. Like, I don't know. And also, it seems like... So they had that post credit scene where the Venom symbiote gets left in the MCU... It seems like the guy, I, I yeah, I saw that too. It's like I, don't, it's like I can't pronounce scene. his name. But oh, the guy he plays, plays a Baron Mordo in the MCU. Yeah. And obviously, he's, you know, he's known this. for uh, Twelve Years a Slave, obviously. Yeah. But nah, his first when you think of him, you should think of Baron Mordo first. No, nah, I'm kidding. <laughs> but uh, um, whatever. What was I saying? So yeah, it's he's he plays a character in the MCU, like we just said, Baron Mordo. He plays a different character in this, but it seems like he's in the MCU for that scene where the symbiote gets left there, and he's, like, capturing it. Yeah. It's the same I, I, actor who's the bartender. It's like, what is happening? What is... Uh, is, is, is is he, like, a variant? Why? How did he get must, in the MCU? He's probably just... Well, that would make the most sense. He's probably just, like, a... I don't think it's in the MCU. There's no way. I mean, that scene... They, they're going to they're gonna say he got transported back to his universe... Like, it's just going to be the same people. Or, like... Well, honestly, I don't remember what the bartender looked like from uh, No Way Home. But, uh... From what I've heard is that, like... they Venom's going to come, apparently, in Secret Wars. Like, uh... Kevin Feige, like, likes... Venom's Tom Hardy as an actor. Venom's going to come, come in Secret yeah. Wars? He's going to come gonna in sick. Secret Wars. That's going to be he, awesome. But, no. um... So, I feel like he's going to probably end up being in the MCU. Just a different version. Maybe. I feel like this is it. I mean, I, I think Tom Hardy's probably going to walk away after this. And they should recast. This is definitely the last Venom movie. I don't know what they're going to do with the character, though. Like, he may pop up in, like, other... Like, if they do, like, a Miles Morales movie or something. Or, like, a another, like, they do an Andrew Garfield Spider-Man or something. He, he could always just pop up in that. Yeah. They but, are developing a, a live-action Miles Morales movie, though. I think they should just, like... They should just take the Sony Spider-Man universe and just, like, burn it, bury it. Like, what they should do is just either have, do a Spider-Man, like, 2099 universe, or just do, like, a Miles Morales and just use all the Spider-Man belt. Like, I don't, like, if they make a live-action Miles Morales movie, do you know how much money they would make? It doesn't even have to be yeah. good. Mad people would just go see that. I mean, I would, me and you would see that movie. Yeah, but we also, I mean, I see everything, but. Yeah. I still, th- yeah, it wouldn't make money. It would make money. Think about Regardless how well, like, the Black feels. Panther movies do. Yeah. The movies with like a black lead, like superhero movies, they do well. Yeah. I mean, there's not many of them, but... Is no, it really only like, Black Miles, Panther? Miles is now like a... Uh... Honestly, That's crazy. Yeah, probably. Yeah, probably. But, and Blade. like Spider-Verse. Well, Blade, yeah, Blade's awesome. But yeah, I feel like definitely Miles Morales film would do well. But I think part of the deal with the, the Spider-Man characters, like, Kevin Feige, he's going to develop the Miles Morales movie for them. Hopefully. Yeah. Although, I don't know how much I trust him anymore these days. Yeah. We'll see. Hope he can handle the right. X-Men, right? Yeah. We could, yeah. uh... We could move on to our, our last movie for today. Which, like I mentioned earlier in the podcast we watched this movie because we held a giveaway for 500 instagram followers and the winner received 
4K copy of Dune 2, and they got to choose a hidden Isn't... gem movie of theirs for us to talk about. So, Mr. At Draco Maze on Instagram was the winner, and he said that a movie that he thought was a hidden gem of his was this film, Better Watch Out. Uh, I think it released 2016. Don't like Let me pull that. it up really quick. Yeah, released 2016, directed by Chris Peckover, who has two films to his name, this being one of them. And it's basically a home invasion story set during Christmas time. And there's a big twist. There's a couple big twists throughout. Just for starters, I think that watching this during Christmas time probably would have helped. Get a little better, yeah. Um, but yeah, when it started, I definitely thought it had a lot of potential. Yeah, I was liking I was liking the Home Alone vibes. I liked the lead girl. I thought she was pretty good following her. I knew I recognized from somewhere. Recognized her from somewhere. I wasn't sure. But apparently she plays Priscilla in the Elvis movie. And that's, yeah, then it clicked. That's where I knew her from. I didn't know I liked following, yeah. I mean, she she was good, though. You have these two kids, like, you know, they're having their typical dialogue of, oh, one of them wants to fuck the babysitter and, like, this and that. Very sexual and, like, inappropriate dialogue. But honestly... That is like how preteens speak. So I think I I actually respected them for um going yeah, like for yeah. doing that even though it's like weird. That's literally like how preteens talk. It's but anyways. So what ends up happening is um this this girl who we follow her name is Ashley What's- She is moving to another state, and it's like her last time babysitting this kid. So he has this plan of like, oh, I'm going to, you know, try to kiss her. Watch a scrape on her or something. Yeah, watch this. Yeah. So, you know, it's like what it's a typical kind of plot. Yeah. Kids in love with his babysitter or whatever. But the twist is that for some reason the kid... He's the like, one, yeah. He's the one that's he's, basically he's like controlling setting, the home invasion. Yeah, the home invasion was actually faked by him in order to like get her blood rate up, so that she would confuse it with like attraction or something. I don't know. He says like this weird plan. Dude, he, has. he basically just like he wanted to try to save her from the home invasion, so that he would that she he think that she'd fall in love with him essentially. Stupid thirteen-year-old yeah. shit. Except I don't, I don't know. I just yeah. It, it kind of becomes like it becomes like a reverse home invasion almost. Invasion. Where like where like the the person being kidnapped is like within the home of the person. Like it's yeah. his home, home, but he but he's holding someone else hostage in his own home. It's like yeah, it's weird. I don't know when it jumps to to. I want to get his name. Hold on. The boyfriend? Yeah, no, no, Luke. When it jumps to Luke being the main character, the film kind of fell apart for me in a lot of ways. Yeah, One, yeah. he's just so annoying. So annoying. He's very so annoying. So fucking annoying. Yeah, I just... And he's trying to... It's trying to make him come off as, like, insane. Like, almost like a Joker-esque. Yeah. Like what, he's, like, doing all this shit because he's psycho, but it's just so corny. He's just some like fucking rich white kid from uh, like a. Oh no, that has nothing to do with it. But you know what I mean. Like he's just like he's trying to act like he's just like I don't know how to explain it. Yeah, it just I don't know. He was really annoying. Um, but yeah, but yeah, it basically like once once she gets kid like tied up, it just the movie just plummeted for me. Yeah. I just really wasn't a fan. Um, it just gets they so start, unrealistic. It gets like perverted. Like the kids start talking about like oh, groping like, her and shit. Yeah, he like he like touches her boob and he's like, "Oh, no wonder why your boyfriend like like this so much." Like just like this weird really shit. Weird, yeah. Um. Yeah, it's just really cringe. I don't know. Yeah. But the plot doesn't make any sense. Why does he want to do this? Like, what does he gain? Yeah, from- there's no like real. After he kidnaps her, like there's no real like plan. It's just like, 
Like he never establishes what he wants. Yeah, Does like he what is say, his like, goal? What, yeah, like what? He, like he, he kidnaps kills, her. He like, sh- and then he shoots his best friend. Her friend, and then kills her boyfriend. That I, I kind of like the the scenes with the boyfriend, or the ex boyfriend. Yeah, he was my scenes. honestly. I thought he was the best actor in the whole thing. Like when he ends up like getting hung, right. and then also you're telling me none of them could overpower this little kid. Yeah, that's some, like. Uh, also, it's revealed that like he sets up this whole thing so that the parents can go to the house after, um, and like discover this whole crime scene, and it'll be that he was asleep this whole time. He like fires a shotgun blast. Not only would he hear that if he was actually sleeping, so that wouldn't work. Yeah. How does a neighbor not hear that and like be like, "Yo, why did a shotgun just go yeah, off?" Yeah, no door? one called nine one one after hearing no, the, the gunshots. Yeah, it just it doesn't make sense. And even if I want to suspend my disbelief, there's just not enough substance there for me to even care. Yeah, like the one but, scene that that I was like, "All right, this scene's about to be cool." Like the paint can when it knocks yeah. the dude's head. Uh, but like the movie's rated R. Why don't you show it? Like, why didn't it it's show really the guys? Are? I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, dude. Uh-huh. They talk about like pussy and like all the shit in it. it it's no, not be great. I just because because they cut away a lot from the gore scene, so I just assume that you know, I guess like a budget yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, why didn't they like show his no, his know, head? Man. I wish they would have went more into like the the, bad, the, yeah. the bloody aspect of it. Yeah. Um, I thought that there was like a good premise there. There's a good idea for a story somewhere in there. Yeah, it had but... potential, but it just I don't know. It didn't land like the, the the twist didn't land for me. Like it didn't work. Yeah. It just it when yeah, I don't know. I thought that his friend was pretty good. That kid He's in he's in something else. His friend. Nothing that I've seen. Apparently he's in the visit. Let me see. I don't know. He looks mad familiar, bro. He looks like uh, what's his face? He looks like another child actor from like years ago. That's what I'm thinking of, maybe. Yeah. I feel like he's in. I don't know. I can't remember. Yeah. I don't know, yeah. But let me see. Yeah, like I said, it would have hit better during Christmas. I feel like. I agree. I like seeing Patrick Warburton in there. Oh, yeah, he the plays a dad, right? Yeah. I just like seeing him pop up in movies. I'm a big fan of, of yeah. him as an actor. Um, you see, I had a couple notes here. Yeah, what else? Um, oh, I thought the ending was somewhat satisfying, where she's but actually she's alive, alive yeah. and she's going to fuck him over. Yeah. But... I thought that it would have been more satisfying if he got his head blown off at the end. And it I, agree. Like I was like hoping he was gonna. The like, first time in my life, I was like rooting for the fucking child to die. Yeah, <laughs> this this guy was so annoying. It actually makes you want the the kid to not make it out of the movie. Yeah, it was just like it was so. Uh, I just can't understand like why anything is happening. Yeah. Um, there was the director's also... name again. Um, the director is Chris Peck over. Did he write it? Yeah. Uh. One thing I did notice, though, that I got a there, I saw at least attempts at some like unique camera movement, um, like certain scenes where I remember specifically the girl gets knocked back in her chair, and as the chair falls over, the camera like. Rotates ninety degrees. Yeah, like there was there was some stuff, cool, like where she tackles him. Yeah, yeah. The camera, yeah, stuff like that. There, there was at least attempts. It's not just like shot over shot the entire time and just yeah. like, you know he put some effort into the direction. But I just agree. like I feel like the more you think about the film and like the things that happen, the less and less sense that it makes. Yes, in, in so many different aspects. Mm-hmm. Like I could sit here and nitpick it all day. But yeah, I don't know. I, I'm trying to think if I had a favorite scene. Yeah, that's um, that's tough. I don't know. I would like the paint can scene. 
if they actually showed the dude's head come off. Yeah, so I agree. Cool. Use the R rating a little bit. Um, but yeah, no, I, I did like the scenes with the ex boyfriend where he like shows up to the house and he's like drinking a beer, uh, yeah. like, like practicing what he's gonna say. I thought that was funny. Yeah, his character in general was funny. He isn't he from uh, he was in Elvis, that guy, right? Too, yeah, yeah, and he's in Stranger Things, Stranger Things as well. Yeah, I forgot that he's in Elvis, he has like a small role though. I think, yeah, right? yeah, um. Yeah, I forgot that it was in Elvis. But yeah, and then my favorite character is the girl Ashley. I thought you, I would have rather like followed her. Uh, yeah, had, like me too. Like a Christmas home invasion instead of like this weird. Or or this twist could have worked. It's just like if they establish clear motivations and like explain yeah, why he's doing like he, what he's doing. He kidnaps her, and it's never really explained why he kidnapped her or what he plans to do. Yeah, like he wants to kiss her. Is that what it is? Like, I just, oh, it's very weird. Yeah, um, but yeah, I mean, to each her own. Uh, if you're listening yeah, no. to this, uh, Mister Draco Maze, I'm sorry for violating. Yeah, I'm sure there's movies that we love that you would violate that we enjoy. Yeah, you know, but, but like I understand what like how people could like. Yeah, it. like I get that it has an audience. It's just not for me, and yeah. that's just my opinion. Like, I'm still glad that I watched it. I'm glad that I checked it out. I at least explored this. Yeah. Like, like, it was a cool premise. And it's a movie that, honestly, I probably would have never watched. Yeah, unless, no. I'd... Like, unless you recommended it. So. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't know if you, yeah. want, you want to get to ratings. Yeah. Uh, sadly, I was a little generous on this one. Because I, I gave this a 2 out of two out of 5 stars. Yeah. 4 out of 10. Like I said, there's at least attempts at some interesting camera work, and like the direction is not terrible. There's a good premise. There's good like Christmas vibes. I just couldn't get past the kid, and like yeah. his motivations just don't make sense. Yeah. So, um, I ended up giving it a one and a half. So, uh, three out of ten. Same thing. It's, it's very poorly executed. Like really good, a good premise. Like they had a lot of potential, and then I just the twist for me does not work. Yep, yeah. right there with you. So, all right, yeah. well, uh, yeah, thanks for for recommending that for us to check out. I'm sorry that we didn't like it. Yeah. But, um, I don't know. Sorry. Yeah. I hope we didn't hurt your. Feelings yeah, I'm not trying that. to like. Yeah, but but you know. Everyone has their own opinions Opinion, on film, yeah. and that's what's so great about film. Um, that's true. All that's right, true. so now we can go to our Q&A. We actually have a decent bit of questions. Oh, wow. So this is a great one that we kind of talked about a little bit earlier, and it's from at 4kd.ray on Instagram. And he says, theaters seem to be struggling and hit hit is in quotes, movies aren't bringing in customers. They've added food, alcohol, bowling, and more to entice customers. Where do they go next besides reduced tickets at certain times? That's a great question. We know. went over this a little bit earlier. Um, I don't know. The only thing that I, I can really think like, of I don't, is... What I don't understand is that like last year we had... Barbie, we had Oppenheimer, and we had Mario, all over a billion. Oppenheimer was a three-hour, like, like, it's basically character study on a scientist. Like, it's not like a big action. And that made, what, $800 million? Yeah, but those are the outliers. There were certain years where, I'm pretty sure, like, maybe close to 10 movies made a billion dollars. That's not something that you're seeing now. No, I know. But I think that the problem isn't with... I mean, people not going to the theaters is obviously a problem, but I think that I don't think it's a lack of the theater uh, theaters effort. Like I think the theater, like the AMC pass is sick. Like yeah, yeah. And if you like, it's actually so everyone should just do it. Like I don't understand why people don't. Yeah, like one IMAX ticket after tax is like twenty seven dollars. That's that is the price of paying the for the pa- whole pass. The pass, yeah, it's twenty five a month. Like it's it's so anyway, yeah. But to get back to the original question, yeah. like what what do I think is is the answer to that 
I would say lowering the budget of the films. Yeah. If you work on a smaller budget, you won't need to make a billion to make your money back. Yeah. That, I, I feel like, is the ultimate goal. And this goes hand-in-hand hand with something else that people don't want to talk about, which is integrating AI into creating films. Using it as a tool, not using it to create shit. Like, how would AI help? Or would, like, cost Because it could, it could cut costs and simplify how to make film. And I feel like that's where it's going, and that's why... It was, you know, this big writer strike, and yeah, but I've, that's security. not fair because you can make movies for cheaper with without AI. You don't need AI to make it cheaper. Yeah, no, I'm it, not saying that's the answer, but that's gonna be a tool they use. Yeah. I think it it that is one of the ways that costs are gonna be cut. It's gonna happen. Yeah. But, but like you said too, also, I think the the COVID had a big thing to do with a lot of the budgets that ballooned up. Yeah, but. We'll see. We'll, but, we'll see yeah, I'm trying to think of like what can theaters do to entice people to come. I mean, they already have like you mentioned the pass. The a lot of theaters do it. Regal has one. AMC. They have like one. a they have a bar. They have food. The food's like good. It's not even like I mean at AMC. It's like Applebee's food. It's like the same type of. It's not you know you're not like fine dining, but it's you know you get decent food. Yeah, I think a lot of it. I mean, a lot of studios now are kind of like. All right, we'll have our movie in theaters for like two weeks and dump it on streaming, right? Yeah, away. that's that's another thing. That's another like, problem. Yeah. Well, Where, I don't know if you saw. Um, well, no. Continue your thought. I'm sorry. Yeah, everyone is so used to saying, "Oh, I'll just wait for it to come to streaming." Like that's not a thought that people had. Like yeah, yeah. even like well, five, ten, like ten, five, years, ten ago, years ago, even yeah. five years ago. Yeah. Like you, you had to go see a movie while I was in theaters, or you had to wait and then buy like a DVD. Yeah. Which, you know, know. it's kind of sad because, like, you're going to see directors not get chances to make other movies because their movies are going to fail. And it might not be because of them. Well, look at the the Pixar. I was actually just going to bring up Pixar because they they announced Inside Out 2 is going to, you know, Inside Out 2 is going to have a a 100-day theatrical release, which is like, I guarantee it's 100% going to make a profit now because... Just the title of being a Pixar movie and being in theaters for a hundred days in the summer, like yeah. kids are gonna see that movie, mm-hmm. and it makes sense. There's no why you're like an example. I know it's not a Pixar movie, but uh, Monkey Man, bro, that was in theaters for like literally what two weeks, three weeks maybe. I'm pretty sure Taro was in theaters for like a week, and then <laughs> it was on streaming already. It's like I don't, I don't know. I don't get but, it. Like I really don't understand. The reason I understand though, because the reason why is because these companies are so in debt because of these streaming services that but they won't have they make to... more profit if they put it in the theater more. Like I don't because they they want people to come to the streaming services yeah. to the point that they care more about that than like the uh, yeah. whatever box office. So Good. it's definitely an like... interesting question. And yeah. Uh, yeah. that was a really you know, good question. Thank yeah, you for but, the question. But. No one really knows the answer to that. Uh, yeah. So. Uh, yeah, there's a couple more, though. What else we got? Hold on a sec. So this one's from at... Could be pronouncing this wrong. Brett Paul Hughes on Instagram. He says, what's your favorite horror franchise? You want to go first? Yeah, mine's Evil Dead. That's pretty easy. Really? Yeah, that's yeah. up there. I, I think Nightmare on Elm Street. It has. Yeah, its... I was gonna say. I really, I thought Scream for you would have been. Nah, Nightmare on Elm Street. It has its duds, um, for sure. But I think overall, it's my favorite, just because like the character and night, the original Nightmare on Elm Street. It's like one of my yeah, favorite horror movies good, of all man. time. And Freddy's like sick. His character yeah. really cool. Yeah, I love Freddy, and I love Nancy. She's like one of the best yeah. final girls in my opinion. Yeah, I'll say this: so. Evil Evil Dead is yet to put out a bad movie. The Evil Dead franchise. True. Um, all right, yeah. and then there's another question from at Melissa De Cruz on Instagram, and she says, "Who is your favorite Batman actor?" Um, honestly, favorite, for, like 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 playing like, Batman or like yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's Probably. your favorite? Yeah, go ahead. Probably Pattinson. Honestly. Yeah, it it could be um, recency bias, but my I, I, heart I, pulls me towards Pattinson. Pattinson. Although I do really love Keaton, I think Keaton and Pattinson are the best too. Yeah, 
I think Bale is very overrated, in my opinion. He's, yeah. he's it's it's not really like a true Batman. It's more it's like a hybrid kind of with Nolan's vision of the movie. Yeah, he's more of like a militarized, realistic yeah. Batman. Keaton is more of that like goofy. goofy. Yeah, and then and Pattinson's yeah, like the, the crime world detective kind of Batman, which is how he yeah. is in the comics. Yeah. Or wait, did I say Pattinson? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I I would say it's it's a toss up between Pattinson and Keaton for me. Yeah. But good question. Yeah. And then last one is from. Our giveaway winner that we just ripped into a movie. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. again. Yeah, but, sorry, dude. <laughs> but at Draco Maze on Instagram asks, "Hold on, I just lost it. What was your craziest movie going experience?" Uh, I, got, I got a couple. I feel that come to my head. Well, you, I feel like you have crazier ones than I do because I don't. I don't really go to the theaters here. Yeah. Um. But, well, the one that comes to mind obviously is Endgame. Yeah. seeing that in the theater that was like unmatched energy yeah it was just like a different vibe to marvel at the time crying with complete strangers next to you yeah i remember just like people were howling at the end yeah. when black panther came out some dude like stood up and was like that's black panther like just screamed it to the it was just <laughs> one of like it was like a surreal moment yeah. Like I just remember being in awe at that last final battle scene where everyone came out, like complete euphoria. They're never um, gonna top that. Yeah, but yeah, because nostalgia yeah. kind of played out as much as I love it. Yeah. Um, I've had some bad experiences this year. I was I went to see that movie Out of Darkness. I think it's called. It's like the Stone Age horror. Oh yeah. Which I really liked. That's like one that flew under everyone's radar. Um. So we're towards the last act, and there's like this scene where it's kind of like psychedelic vision happening. Mm-hmm. Then all of a sudden, the fucking fire alarm just goes off in the theater. Like the, this bright light like Damn. just starts flashing. I was like, what the fuck? And then I the realized fire. like it wasn't part of the movie. No, <laughs> I mean, I, <laughs> yeah, bro. I was like, what is this? And then I noticed that. I was like, wait, that's the fire alarm. And it was only like me and like three other people in the theater maybe yeah so then i walked out and like some anc employee was like oh that's all right everyone just go back to your theaters so i went that's back in there and then after like 10 minutes the movie started again but yeah, yeah i don't know if you have any i mean end game probably infinity war 2 i feel like was really good because like the cliffhanger that left people on like the yeah. theater was like everyone was like mad hype that you know it looked like they won and then it ends with just all of them gone, like half the team gone, and just mm-hmm. nothing. That was pretty surreal. Yeah, I've Honestly, had a couple of, like bad ones. I've had probably more bad than amazing, you know. Um, I feel like honestly, because I AMC over here is pretty good, like by us, and yeah. even Regal. It was more like at the atrium, which the atrium is like our local theater, uh, like a. It's not. A, I think it's just an individually owned one. Like I don't think it's a. Yeah, yeah. It's not a chain. Yeah, okay. a lot of like teenagers go there. So like you go to the movies and people like screaming and throwing shit. It's annoying. Yeah. Um, I had a couple ones with like a lot of older, older like grandmothers and grandfathers. Just like don't understand that you shouldn't just speak very loudly and ask what's going on during the middle of the oh movie. yeah that actually reminds me i went one time i went to go see top gun and it was like the nursing home had like a field trip day that day and they all like it was like this huge group of like basically it was just me and like 20 nursing home people in the middle of the theater it was just, like that's, people that's with like sick. their phones out and like you know yeah. scre- not screaming but talking really loud and like you know so you yeah. can imagine Mine was, I went to see Barbarian, that horror movie. For some reason, there was, yeah. like, this old lady in the back. Dude, make comments at everything. There was, like, one scene, you remember? Did you see that movie or no? No. Oh, you have But I, I've Did seen you? clips of it. Yeah, there's there's one scene where there's, like, a hidden door in, like, one of the basements. And the way to yeah. open it is, like, you have to pull a rope. So there's a shot where, like, the camera kind of pans and lingers on the rope. Mm-hmm. And this lady's just like, what is that? Like, mad loud. I was like, bro, like, why did you have to make that comment? Like, just watch the movie. Movie, yeah. Yeah. 
but just stuff like that that i just remember like i because i went to see it with my friend and when she said that we started like crying laughing right. but yeah a lot of yeah. crazy theater experiences yeah so yeah all right um i guess we could wrap up the episode you, we skipped over you last week for the recommendation Joe, yeah so so, so you um, can go ahead i'm actually um my movie this week You've seen it. we we both have seen it, but I haven't seen it in a very long time, and I'm not sure if like when's the last time you saw it. Um, I believe it came out in 1999. I believe I could be wrong. Oh no, 2001, 2001, and it's directed by uh, Chris Columbus, and it's Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, which is the first one, right? I'm not going crazy. Mm-hmm. That's the right. first. I'm I'm actually so my I'm going to London in August and I kind of wanted to because London's probably biggest well England's biggest film thing is Harry Potter so I kind of wanted to rewatch the movies I don't know if I've even finished the, the the series but I've watched like obviously them when I'm younger but I don't really remember them that, that much yeah honestly you're like I'm excited but you're also that's dangerous because now I'm gonna want to rewatch the whole thing well that's I my plan is I want to rewatch all yeah. of them. Yeah, well, not. I don't even remember. Like, you know, I want to. You know, I want to learn. Like, I feel like you yeah, like no, it I, a lot more than I did when I was. I love there. Harry Potter. That's yeah. like one of the best uh, fantasy film franchises ever. Definitely, yeah. in my opinion. So, all right. Um, and also, while we're at it, I'll recommend the, the list. list we skipped over this week because it would have just messed up the order for us doing yeah. lists and and movies, but. Next episode is actually our 50th episode, which is pretty crazy. Damn. Episode 50. So I thought we it would be fun to do our top 10 favorite movies that are 50 years old or older. So anything 1974 or before. That's so, a really good one, man. Yeah, I feel like that'll be fun. And it's crazy to think that 50 years ago was only 1974. Yeah. It doesn't feel like 50 years ago, but <laughs> All right. uh, yeah. So yeah. thanks everyone for listening. Uh, go ahead and follow us on our socials, our, our Instagram X. What else we got? Join our discord, yeah. uh, follow us on letterboxd and we are available on Apple podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube. So th- thanks again, everyone for listening. Thank you for listening. We'll catch you in two weeks. Peace.